Uh, you know, the thing to remember here is this is a numbers game. You know, it's what we were talking about in the beginning that a program may have 400 applications mm -hmm. and 30 spots. Um, and they all have their own way of dealing with, with applications. Some will reach out for interviews, some won't. Some will just make decisions based on the paper. Yeah. Um, you know, so I think it's, it's more than okay if you've had contact with a faculty member um, in say like another week, mid-January, because we've just started getting these applications uh, to our offices. Mm -hmm. So, you know, another week, just following up with a really short email that just says, just wanted to let you know, I hope you're doing well. I'm still really interested in this program. Please let me know if I can um, give you any additional information, fine. But after that, you, you kind of need to let it go um, and just let the process happen because it does take time. I mean, I've made offers as late as April 1 mm -hmm. um, and as early as like February 1. Yeah. So this process just takes time and uh, yeah, I know it's so frustrating. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so as, as you've heard, just just relax. You know, there's there's nothing you can do about it. Uh, just relax and, and, and wait for the time. Um, you surely get a response from the programs. Uh, so just, re I know it's it, it's it's a tense uh, stage for people. It's a very stressful uh, stage, but you you have to let you know things calm you down. Um, one question from uh, Doctor Nsusa: uh, What's the best way to approach someone for recommendation letter? <laughs> I think it depends on your relationship with the person. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's really a shame that these relationships between students and faculty vary so much, um, not only around the world, but even just in institutions and departments. Um, what I ask for and what I think works pretty well um, is I ask my students if they want a letter to prepare for me um, an updated CV so that I kind of know what they're working on. Uh, kind of a bullet list of, obviously I know how I know the students, but what specifically about my relationship with the student they want me to mention in a letter. Mm -hmm. So if they took my class and they really got into the environmental justice component and they wrote an extra um, bit in their final paper about um, how something would impact a community and they were really proud of that. I want them to tell me, I want you to mention that in the, the letter. Um, and then I actually require, because I, you know, there's, these things take a lot of time. A letter of recommendation can take me a half a day to write. Um, I require at least three weeks notice before mm -hmm. the deadline and a final like polished draft of the student's statement of purpose, because I want that to be done three weeks ahead of time so I can read it. So yeah. I can make sure I actually think about this student, how, you know, my letter could help support their case. And I have plenty of time to do that before the deadline. Um, so I would say whatever you do and whatever approach you use, do it well in advance of a deadline. Yeah. So, um, Dr. Nsusa, as you've heard, I mean, you, you have to, first of all, get to people that you feel very confident in, that they are going to give you a very strong recommendation um, and ask them way in advance. Uh, you don't want to wait a week to deadline and then shoot an email that you want the recommendation down. So you have to approach them very early in your application process. I think there's a, a, a common question that runs um, through. Someone wants to know what is the weight or how important is having a publication uh, as a PhD applicant? Um, how will that affect his chances if for example he doesn't have any he has like a, a ton of work experience but no publication um a publication that is relevant <laughs> to the program you're applying to and in a well-respected journal yeah. is always going to be viewed positively like because that's what a phd usually does right yeah like we write papers um, it will always be, be viewed positively because that is, it shows that you can do that. I will say, um, 
that I'm seeing a trend here that scares me a little bit. And it seems like there's too much weight being put on this, this idea of I need a publication. Mm -hmm. And people are spending a lot of time uh, trying to write these review articles. And then they end up getting published in places that really don't, uh, wouldn't be places that you'd, you'd publish in as a PhD student. Yeah. I, I think those could actually hurt your application. Because if you don't know that um, that pub type of publication isn't necessarily what the faculty mentor would expect, um, and you've just done it to push it out there, I think it could actually hurt. Mm -hmm. um, so I'd be really careful with my time. And if it were me, I'd, I'd rather have work experience, relevant work experience, put my time in that, than spend a year trying to cover a review of a field that I haven't really spent a lot of time in yet to get barely anything worth you know, from it. It's just, to me, it's not worth the time yeah. or the effort. Yeah. So, um, I mean, it's, it's so, as you've heard, it's not like a, a deal breaker, uh, but if you, if you have a paper that is, you know, relevant to the field you're applying to uh, and it's, it's published in a reputable journal, then for sure it's, it's, it's going to help you. Um, let's take but a couple of... I think of... on the flip side, you know, mm -hmm. that's important. On the flip side though, not having a paper will not hurt you. Okay, sure. Mm -hmm. you know, like, I think we need to remember that it's okay. Yeah. If we don't expect it. You're not a PhD student. Yet. <laughs> yes, it's okay. It really mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I mean, so not having a paper is not like a negative mark on your application. Uh, but if you have it, it's it could help, right? In a relevant field, in 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 uh, in a well-respected journal. Uh, so let's take some few comments. I think we are almost time um we've done 58 minutes uh uh this one says thank you so much uh dr banda and professor Gillian. um uh, someone says i truly i truly appreciate uh i always truly appreciate her authenticity her relentless support for students her content on linkedin uh and she is yet young uh okay so this is from mula uh on youtube um uh, okay so someone wants to i think we've we've answered most of the questions that are coming in um let's see okay we've we've answered most of this uh, recommendation letters um in an interview, what are they looking out for? Uh, do you have to wait for a response from a professor before you put in your application? I think we've answered all that. You don't have to. Um, you don't have to wait. Um, so I think we we've, we've taken enough of our professor's time. Uh, it's almost twelve o'clock on the dot. Uh, thank you so much for, for for taking the time to speak with us today. Uh, before you leave us any any final thoughts that you you have for prospective applicants and and students oh i think just keep asking these great questions um you know there's no reason why you should know the answers to all of these to start and find people who will help you and will help mentor you through this i think you know, what you're doing is amazing because you know, the only way we're all going to, to globally get better at this is if we share our information. So don't be afraid to ask ask the hard questions and ask them of people who have the answers. And sure. Thank you. Thank you so much. So uh, thank you again, Professor Julian, for joining us today. We truly, truly appreciate your time. And we hope that it's, I mean, this collaboration is going to continue uh, for, for, for most people to, to, to also benefit. So thank you for your time.